All right, so now I'm going to show you how to take a photo, much like this one, and I'll teach you how to turn it to something like this. Okay. And this is great because it's all black. There's no gray in here. Now there's several variations where this workflow comes in handy. One, shirts. Two, laser. Um, so, and sure, offset works good too. But uh, mainly, when you do have to have something on burned on a piece of wood, this is a great method of doing it. And when screen printing comes along, great method. And you can see, uh, if I turn a few of these off, let's see if I can show you the variations here. This one doesn't have the dots, it has some gray. Here's more of a line art look. See how detailed that is? All from that photo. All right, so let's begin. First thing I'm gonna do is close this out so I don't cheat. Now, my belief of a workflow is like this. A workflow is something that can be duplicated across many different photos. But in this case, the only thing that goes across different photos it has to be a common law, a very light background, and hardly any spectral highlights. You see on, on her, the actual light is very even. There's no highlights anywhere. It does help if they have light colored clothing, but it's not a requirement. So find a picture. And you should be able to zoom in on the picture and it has very high resolution. So nothing off the internet that's real low res is gonna work. So once you find that, and if you're in my class, I usually what take pictures of you, and you're gonna be editing your own picture, trying to develop you as a t-shirt ready or you as a line art, just for the understanding of the workflow. So I'm going to save this and we'll begin. All right, so we start by opening up this file. And we're going to go to layers. And we're going to make three layers, actually just duplicates of these by hitting this button. The top one I'm going to call, call blur. This one I'm going to call sharpen. Oops. And this one I'm going to call original. Now I warn you, at some time you're going to feel lost because there's a lot of layers here that you have to kind of manage. But I'm going to try to explain it along the way on what I'm looking at. That way, again, as a workflow, it works. Oops. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on the face and I'm just going to go like this. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to choose five here and hit OK. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control F. Control F is to repeat the last action. There we go. That's the amount of blur I want. Okay, next. I'm going to go into Filter and then I'm going to go Edge Detect and go Edge. And you can see these wild, crazy colors. So the reason it's doing that is I need to desaturate the image, the blur one. So, so Colors, Desaturate. And I'm going to choose Luminosity because it's going to capture some of this in the lips. Okay, now let's go Filter, Edge Detect, Edge. And what I'm looking for here is around the nose area, I have a white line. Doesn't matter too much about the teeth. In the eyes, you see how this is a real thick line? I might want to tone this down. 
Something like that, maybe. Perfect. Now, if I want to over-exaggerate these lines, I could always take these into threshold. I could do this. Or, sometimes you're going to have to take them into levels, and you could brighten them up by going like this. You want those only the white lines, though. You don't want any of these little worms. I call them. See that's rich and dark and then everything else has got bright whites. But there's no little worms crawling around. Alright, hit OK. Now let's take this and use it as a divide. So the reason it's got color right now is why? Well, the bottom one has color. This one, the Sharpen. The Sharpen we're going to use here in a little bit, but I have this original. I'm going to make a duplicate of it again. And we're going to call this Grayscale. Or how about Desaturate, so I can keep that term in your mind. It's my desat. So I'm going to take this and desaturate it. Colors, desaturate, again, luminosity. Okay, so we can just move that up and you'll see I only have the black and white. And this is only in areas that are extreme black that that shows up. Good. So these are, these two go hand in hand, but what I like to do is make it so they, they're not required to be on in order for it to work. In order to do that, we make a selection and we go edit, copy visible, edit, paste as new layer. And we'll move this to the top. So now I pretty much can shut all this off except for the original. This one I can make darker. I can now go into uh, colors, go to levels. And sometimes you'll be able to pull out more detail in the drawing. That's what I want, right there. We'll call this one darks. Okay, now we have to get like the shadows and the detail. So we go back to the original. Make a copy. On the copy, call this super sharp. Turn this one off so I can see it. And what I'm going to be doing is zooming in again and go filters, enhance, unmask sharp. And how do I know how much to add? Well, you can start seeing tearing um, in the in the highlight area. So right here where it's bright, notice I have some of these white pixels in here. Okay, that's how I know that I've gone far enough. So I'm going to keep with this. Hit OK. OK, I warn you, it's going to look ugly. But it almost looks like one of those pictures back in, uh, oh shoot, the guy that did the, the post, Saturday Evening Post, which is, it'll come to me. I just got to stop thinking about it and it'll come to me. Or, yeah, there's probably a thousand people commenting on it. I will find it, so you don't have to do that. So here you take this, and you go to desaturate. 
turns out pretty nice. In this case, again, what I want to do is capture some of the, the rich color in the lips for this. So I'll hit OK. Okay, next, I'll take this and I'll copy it. And I need a super sharp invert. So colors, invert. This one is going to be set to dodge. And I get this. Now what I want to do is get some of the details back. Well, these are this is a negative and a positive. In order to throw off for the details to show up, I'll take the super sharp invert and blur it a little bit. I'll choose five again. Hit OK. And I'll probably do it one more time, so control F. I like that. It looks nice. So again, we'll copy visible and edit paste as new layer. What I'm going to do is just move this up. We'll call it detail. And with detail, I want to do the same thing as I did the other one. I want to take it and I go, want to go to levels. I'm just going to push this black one further this way. It's going to do something like this. Hit OK. All right. Now what I can do is reuse this super sharp invert up above. So I'll take it and move it up. Turn it off for right now. I'll turn this one back on. This one I'm going to turn on to a multiply. So it should be 100% opacity and on multiply. Again, that's the darks. So the darks, the detail, and now I have this one, the super sharp invert. I'll turn that back on and use it as a, a grain extract. And now I get this. Now this is really nice to use on a laser, but it gets better. Because what if you wanted it for a t-shirt? So if that's the case, you go edit, copy visible, edit, paste as, new layer. And let's name this something. We'll call this for laser. And then we'll do that again. Paste as, new layer. And we'll call this screen. So for the screen print one, what I can do is go in and blur it a little bit. And sometimes this is hard to find. Yeah, right about there. I might have to do it again, but I'm going to try it. The first thing I need to do is get out of RGB mode and go into grayscale. Now this won't affect the laser one. And then I can use a filter called newsprint. And I have the cell size turned pretty far up. The higher the resolution you have, the more you have to turn this up. I have it set to 10, so if I look at the eye, I have about the size of dot structure. You turn on some anti-alias and you can see that it kind of blends the picks or the blends them together and rounds them up a little bit. That's really handy. Let 
There we go. So that's screen print friendly, portrait, laser friendly. And I'm sure if you uncheck and play around with this a little bit, you'll be surprised on how many other happy accidents you can have. Because really, um, it, and we have time, uh, what I want to do is switch back to RGB for a second. And I'll try to place the original color one in here. So I would be able to do that by saving this one out. And then opening up the original dub. So this one right here, it's the same size as the other one. So I could go like this, really. I can go many a different way. The first thing I'll show you is um, posturize. So let's lower the structure of posturize down. And see how the colors aren't as good as it was before because I had run this this actual structure over here called Enhance Unsharpened Mask. And it's still set to where I, I liked it before. Hit OK. So I like this look. I just don't like the highlights. So I'll blur. Gosh, and blur. I'll do that one more time, control F. And then I'll go in here and then go into posturize. So it gives me some low res color. And I'll hit OK. Edit, copy visible. Edit, paste. And what I can do with this one is I can mess around with the structure on the top with the wheel mouse, and you'll find that I can change the whole look of this. Some good, some bad. But like that, that's awesome. And I don't have to use it so strong either. I can turn that down via the opacity. So that's it for this one. I'll, I'll show you the next step in the next video. And to answer my own question, Norman Rockwell. That's what it looks like. Eh, somewhat. Norman Rockwell is a lot better, but it's a, it's a cool filter effect, even if it's just an enhance of sharpen. So, enjoy, and let's move on.